Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about EA Access or EA Play as it's now called and how to best use your 10 hours of FIFA 21 game time on either the, the PlayStation or the Xbox, wherever you will be playing FIFA this year. So we're gonna talk about how to download EA Play, how to get the game started up when the FIFA 21 uh, EA Access trial becomes available, and then also how to best use your time to get the best progress and probably the most coin advantage from your 10 hours in EA Access or EA Play inside of FIFA 21. So we're gonna start from the basics really fast. If you don't know what EA Play is, or EA Access. Basically, you download this app from either the PlayStation or the Xbox store. It's called the EA Play Hub. EA Access was renamed to EA Play this year. It's the same thing. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to go to the home screen and you're going to sign up for EA Access or EA Play. Um, and then you're going to find the game trials tab. And this is where FIFA 21 is going to show up on October 1st. Hopefully, around 4 p.m. UK time. I believe this is when it came out last year. Uh, FIFA 19, there was a bunch of like mix-ups and the EA Access trial actually opened up before the web app even came out. Uh, there was like a soft release of that. So we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit and that could happen again this year. Um, but I would be refreshing your EA Play Hub this year around 4 p.m. UK time on October 1st. That October 1st is the date where this is supposed to be released uh, as per this website right here, Dexerto, it says, according to the game's developers, EA Play Early Access will start on October 1st. So that is the date that we have for EA Access coming out. Now, since we got that basics covered, let's start, start to talk about how can you best use your 10 hours? And I'm actually gonna go into FIFA 20 for this part just to kind of show you what is going on. So when you get in to, when you actually open the app of FIFA 21, you'll have to have it downloaded to play the trial. Um, at the bottom right where it says FIFA 20 right now, when you're on the EA Access trial, that's gonna say EA Access. And that means that your time is going to be counting and that your, tr your time is gonna be running while you have the game open. This is also a small tip when you're inside of EA Access that every time you open and close the game, when you close the game, make sure you press start on your console and close application because if you don't close the application, it might keep your time running for a little bit longer. So let me load into foot and just kind of talk about what we can do during those 10 hours. Uh, but I'll, obviously when you, when you log out of foot, make sure you back out of foot and also quit the app so that your time stops because every minute of these 10 hours is very, very crucial to you getting packs, to you getting rewards, and to your success in starting out FIFA 21 Ultimate Team. So, let's get into the game, right? We just got in the game, let's say we have our 10 hours left, what should I do off the bat? Everything related to your team management, you don't have to do, of course, you don't have to do fitness this year, but if you're applying chemistry styles, um, if you're getting your team chemistry sorted, if you're doing some of the starter objectives, like by putting players in your squad or whatever, do all that stuff on the web app. The basic thing that I want to tell you about using your 10 hours is you want your 10 hours to be strictly gameplay. In my opinion, that's the best value for using your time on the web app because you are on the EA access because you can trade, you can manage your team. You can do everything else on the web app where there's no time restriction but you can't play games on the web app. You only have 10 hours on EA Access to be on the full game. So what I would do is with your 10 hours, I would play games. Now it depends on your skill level, what types of games you should be playing. First things first, I will say just about everybody should play squad battles because since this is coming out on October 1st, which is a Thursday, 4 p.m. UK on a Thursday, the next set of rewards that will be available would be squad battle rewards on that Sunday. So a couple days after that, that's when you'll be able to, to cash in on your first rewards. This would be a great time to start through. If there's any starter objectives inside of the objectives um, hub, you can check this out on the web app, obviously, before getting into foot. But look out, look for the basic and starter objectives that will, I think they're in milestones or I don't know where the, exactly they are. Uh, but... Look for the starter objectives early on in FIFA 21, get your team set up and then get into squad battles and start playing some games against easier opponents, right? You can play against really easy opponents during EA Access because 
there's not as many people on, so it's not going to take as many points to get into the higher ranks. But as you get a few of these games, even if you get to like gold three, right? Gold three rewards, you get a 15K pack, a prime mixed players pack, and 10,000 coins. If the rewards are the same as FIFA 20, that is a lot of rewards for the very first week of FIFA 21, especially because you're getting these before the rest or most of the rest of the world is even getting the game like a week before the rest of the world is getting a game. So that is very, very important. Get on squad battles games. It, it just has a bunch of positives and a bunch of things that you can learn from playing squad battles, even though it kind of sucks, right? You're like, I'm not playing online. The rewards aren't as good as the online rewards, but you're learning the game. You know, it's uh, offline, so you don't have to worry about disconnects and not getting your rewards and points and rivals points or whatever you're going to be getting your squad battle points because you're playing offline and you can even i don't even know if there's a squad battles glitch but if you're interested in doing that like there wasn't fifa 20 you might be able to do some of that but i really like squad battles because of the rewards and you'll be able to get a decent rank with decent rewards with not a lot of time to play games uh you won't you won't have to play that many games to get a high rank so that's the number one thing i would say now if you're somebody who is very elite if you're like a gold one maybe even gold two or better at fifa and you're putting on fifa points to start the game if you're doing fifa points all right ea access is the first time when you can access those fifa points i would not open packs on the game i know it's tempting i know it's good and you want to see the new walkout animation and all that stuff do not do that all right you want to be playing giraffes if you're going to be opening packs with your FIFA points and not doing drafts, I would open those packs on the web app and I would not do uh, that on your 10 hours of EA access because you can make, you know, you can open those packs on the web app. It's not as fun, but you're still getting your coins and you're going to save your time for actually playing games. But if you are a gold two or gold one plus player, get into some online drafts if you're putting in FIFA points for that and start playing because those rewards are going to be better and you're going to get those quicker then you are going to get with uh, squad battle rewards because, you know, it takes a couple hours to play four games. You shouldn't have too much trouble matchmaking because there's going to be people that start playing foot draft. But if you have some trouble matchmaking, then maybe you have to go back and switch to, um, to squad battles and stuff like that. But again, the biggest thing here is I would just get into gameplay. That's the biggest part of the 10 hours of EA access. If you want to play some division rivals, you can. Um, I think there's the more placement matches this year is a possibility. Um, and there's going to be people that start playing division rivals as well, but I would wait to play those until after Sunday. So until after Sunday, uh, you can play squad battles up until Sunday when the rewards come out. And then after that, if you still have 10 hours left or any of your time left, that's when I would go into division rivals because if your EA access time runs out before Tuesday, which you should, Technically, your EA access comes on October 1st, and you want to use all that 10 hours before October 6th if you pre-ordered the game, because then on October 6th, you'll be able to get on the game, um, like for the, you know, no time limit. Like you pre-order the game, you get it three days early. So you want to have your 10 hours used by then to take a full use of your EA access trial. So yeah, those are the main things that I would do. Squad battles, number one. Foot drafts, possibly number two, if you're using FIFA points. And number three, division rivals after Sunday, after you pick up on some of those rewards. Other than that, I don't think I would do much else on the, on the actual game. I would try to do everything else on the web app. I would trade on the web app. I would snipe on the web app. I would open packs if you're using FIFA points on the web app, because the earlier you start to open those packs, the better, even though it's not as fun or not as cool. If you're opening packs, I mean, your best value when the players are the most expensive in terms of those lower tier value players, like some of the 75 to 82 rated gold cards those cards are the most expensive almost all year take a look at like joe gomez from last year we look at his card all the time he was 7,000 coins on the sunday of ea access being out and he dropped down to 3,000 coins two days later or three days later on the full game release the pre-order early access so if you're opening fever points I would say try to do most of those as early as you possibly can because more stuff, if it's a really meta card, that could still go up in the future. But if it's a lower tier card, like, you know, 75 to 82 rated that's selling for a lot of coins, you'll probably see that card going for the most uh, in those first couple days of EA access. So that's about FIFA points and I wanted to get that point across as well. Just a couple other small things. If you do, if you're all about trading and you actually do want to trade um, on the uh on the actual ea access 
there is just some sort of satisfaction that comes from filters. Um, you know, there's always, you know, I think there was one year where it was Premier League or no, it was Brazilian right mids or something like that was uh, Brazilian right wings and right mids was a filter that was working really well early on in the year. There are tons of filters that are going to work like this this year uh, in foot on the market. There's going to be tons of them. All right. So all you have to do is find some of those filters. And if you do want to sit here and snipe, you can absolutely do that. I agree. It is way more fun to trade and it's way more fun to play FIFA on the console. But if you want to be the most, um, have the best use of your time, I think doing the trading and doing all that stuff on the web app is going to be the best. Um, think about it from a sniping perspective, right? I think that you can snipe faster on the web app than you can on the console. In my opinion, using the enter key, or if you're somebody who is, I'm not going to call you a cheater, but it's against EA's terms of service to use short foots. There's more competition than ever on sniping. And a lot of those people are using short foots and they're using, uh, the web app to do it because it is sometimes faster to do it there. Although it feels more rewarding to get a snipe on the console it's technically more effective to do it on the web app. So if you're going to be trading and sniping, I would do most of that on the web app in my opinion, although it does feel fun to snipe for sure. I'm just trying to be realistic with you and talk to you about things that I think you should be doing. And the last thing is when your EA access time is up, I think it'll tell you like in game, it'll give you a pop up and say, Hey, you have one hour remaining. Hey, you have 30 minutes remaining. Hey, you have 15 minutes remaining of your EA access trial. The main thing to do is when your EA access ends, do not forget to do this, okay? Because unless you want to have the EA play, if you want to have all these games and you're going to play them, uh, then I would cancel your EA play slash EA access subscription uh, as soon as you can, all right? Because you're going to get into FIFA 21 and you're not going to remember. So make sure you cancel that very, very soon because you don't want to continually get charged five bucks a month unless you want to have the games. Uh, that they offer out of this uh, as a part of this uh, package. Um, you don't want to get charged that if you're only getting EA Play or EA Access for the new FIFA. So I know it seems simple, but I think it's very important. I think it's very important to talk through is grind those squad battle games when you first get on EA Access, then transfer into division rivals. Most of you guys, I think that's going to be the way to go. Do all of your team management, all of your trading on the web app and play the most games that you can because from those games, you get coin rewards and that'll help you continue to go on in FIFA 21 and get a big time head start. That's the video for today, boys. If you enjoyed it, smash a thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe to the channel if you're new. It's been Nate, the Foot Accountant. Catch you guys later. Peace out.